Hi, welcome to The Stitch TV Show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilting talk show. The perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. Join us for twice monthly talk shows, virtual stitching, celebrity interviews, and podcasts. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by QT Fabrics, and we have these cute little pop-up bins. Look. <laughs> totally serious about these pop-up bins. <laughs> it's been a long week. Just going to put it out there. Y'all will pick up on that. Really Between quickly. This in the next episode. Exactly. But, oh, but you know what I love is the fabric. Oh, it's the, the ombre, ombre stitches. stitches. I know. I love the fabric. It's awesome. Oh, too bad they didn't this send like... us an orange one. We got a blue one. True. Hmm. We need some orange. This is yeah. all cool. This is cool. Just saying. Because it's her My jam. jam. But that's all right. So, I'm so good. You live. I'll live. You live. I'll live. So today <laughs> we're going to be talking about our top three considerations for buying a sewing machine for piecing. Very important piecing and ideas for quilting antique quilt tops. We're joined by my great grandmother's quilt, and it's an English uh, grandmother's English flower garden or grandmother's, grandmother's flower, flower garden, garden English paper piece. No, actually, it's not. It's, it's not? just hand piece. Oh, so Fancy. yeah, I guess in my head I'm thinking uh, that's all we're doing today when we do this is English paper piecing. But a lot not. of people don't hand piece, but that's hand pieced. Oh. oh, yeah, because it's set a little bit different because of the tiny diamonds in between. Yes. Although you could do that with English paper piecing. True. One, yes. one could. One could we if they would like. would not. <laughs> that could happen. Now, were these fabrics, That's why I have my grandmother. These are leftovers from it's dresses, house coats. You know, you can't. That's yeah, you a can't big misnomer. Yeah. We'll have to talk about when we talk about the quilt. The antique top. I thought we were talking about it right now, but okay. But well, it, that's part of my like, oh your to, thing. Yeah, <gasps> like I don't want to talk about before we have to talk because then I don't have anything to talk about. You'll spoil the surprise. <laughs> so what's up? What have you been doing? So I went to the original sewing quilt expo. That was exciting. Just I didn't get, I didn't yesterday, get to go. you didn't get to go, and I, I got asked, say. "Where's Lynn?" I'm like, she ditched me. That's not necessarily true. She ran away. That is that part's true. I did run away. But I did get a pro I tried to be nice and smile and channel you and Did they talk to you? Did yes. you get stopped? Yes. See, that's going back to the RBF. <laughs> 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 but but I did stop and was polite to people. Well, just so you know, I wasn't there because I was in Nashville and we'll talk about that next episode. But I did think this was funny. Because I was helping my sister set up this event that I was at in Nashville, and it was at the Omni Hotel. And so we were working with, you know, the people who are in charge of event planning and stuff. And I had my Netflix and quilts t-shirt on. And the guy said, are you a quilter? And I said, yes, yes, I am. And he said, are you going to be at QuiltCon next year? I'm like, yes, yes we will. <laughs> so I thought it was funny that the guy working it was already asking about Who's going to be there? I'm like, the Stitch TV show will be there. So, <laughs> yeah, they're already prepared. I've laid the groundwork with the Omni. They know we're coming. Awesome. There you go. So, what about the, so how is this? Well, the, so, uh, call back what is to it? Stitch Original, original? Sewing and Quilt Expo. Okay. I'm Everything's sorry. Everything's got the Stitch in it. <laughs> Yet. I just got back. So. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, so stopped and said, hey, girl, hey, to um, Pomori Cutlery. Yes. Friends of the show. Yes. Uh, and not only was there an awkward hug, you know. Which is your jam. There was also the jam. awkward cheek kiss. I'm like, oh, okay. Extra pats. <laughs> like, I, I don't know how to respond to that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. But that's all good. Did, did that. Said hey to them. Uh, and then previous celebrity interviewee David Gilliland was there actually awesome. right next to Famore so talk to good. Him. good met a couple fans that sought me out oh yay so hello hello I'm sorry to Sandy there and to Robin me. who got buttons oh yay uh and one of them saved me from uh the purchase of an unfortunate blouse so there's that <laughs> you didn't buy a blouse that the you color were was great 
the there was a there was a lot of look, a lot of bling or something. And it wasn't shiny bling. It was like a, tons of. And so there were. It was a short sleeved king hands. Which why make this look bigger? I like king hands. I do king hands on a lot of it's blouses. Not the, not the right kind of guy. Like yeah, the but king when hands. they're at the right place on your arm, cool. When they're up here, maybe not so. Not cool. a good look. No, oh, do you like the three quarter inch? Length? I do, yeah, because it that's cuts your best. wrist at the slimmest part of your arm. Yeah, as opposed to cap sleeves, look. which is the fattest part of my arm anyway. Yes, that's not a good, a good look. So, so thank you for saving me from that, and I went and bought a different shirt, <laughs> which I would have worn for filming today, but it wasn't dry yet. Oh, because laundry happens. Today was laundry day in your house. You guys can't see, but I'm wearing pants that totally do not match my shirt. These are pants that usually do not see the outside of my house. It's all good. But they're practically fleece lined, so right now my bottom half is very warm. <laughs> I may start sweating any minute now. Okay, so moving on. Um, we are going to talk about uh, three, three things. things. to look. So I limit it to three. We can have more. Because, you know, I rebelled. Yes. I put down four. I'm not, I, she gives me these rules, and I break them. That's my jam. So we're trying, this is machine piecing. Machine piecing. So something that can do a good quarter inch. That's it? That's it. That's all you look so at? So scratch that fourth thing off right now. No. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. No. She put stitches on there. Yes. No. I want stitches. Quarter inch machine. I, yeah, but I'm not just but, piecing with my... <laughs> <laughs> I know. So that... See this? It's full of shh. It's got your name on it. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. This one's bigger. That's also got your name on it. No, it doesn't. <laughs> anyway, this one's on my side. Anyway, no, I want all the stitches because that's important to me with the machine. Not just that it does a, a straight stitch because I can't do applique. Fabulous advice. Crazy. Not germane to the topic. <laughs> What a nice bunny trail you just went down. Okay, go. What do you, What is your uh, top? What's one of your top three? Are we ranking them? No. Oh. I wrote them down in the order that I remembered them in the five <laughs> minutes before we started filming. Okay. Well, you can and rank I realized them really I forgot quick. one because I really like one on your list. So. You, you can rank them really quick. So what's your top three? Um, I really like having a big flat bed for my machine. And sometimes that's the insert that goes on over it. And it's not necessary when you're just piecing tiny half square triangles, but when you get to where you're piecing a long... Like a long, sashing like and blocks together. Yeah, or, yeah. or column quilts. Like, I really like having that extra so bed. So, yeah. yeah, so it doesn't drag as much. So you can follow in and stuff Now, like that, that being said, I usually sew on a featherweight for a travel machine. But I discovered <clears> the, <throat> ext the extension table for my Janome 6600 is the same shape as my featherweight. <laughs> so you can put it up there and it I have all... to raise the featherweight up a little bit. It, but yeah, it fits right over there. So you're excited about that aspect. I would be if I ever remembered to bring it with me when I had the featherweight. <laughs> yes, I'd be very excited. <laughs> I do carry an extra bed with me when I go so other places. I, I mean, a table. Not an extra bed. <laughs> a table that fits my machine. She does carry an extra quilt with her. I, I do. Because we've heard. And I started doing that now, too. Because I think you sleep better if you have an extra. If you have your quilt with you, you sleep better. You sleep in better until rooms. it's 2 a.m. And the hotel room in Texas starts doing hinky things with the AC where they're like, we're going to be echo friendly and just make it hot as Hades in your room. <laughs> and you wake up super sweaty. <laughs> 201. <laughs> when, I was in when I was overseas, it was Australia. You had to put your key card yes. in it for the, the for air to come on. And then, you know, so being American, we want it cold all the time, especially from the South. We want it cold all the time. So I thought, I will leave the room, because it took it forever to cool down once you got to the room. So I thought, I have a little extra, like, membership card to something I don't care about. So I left it in the room so that the air would keep going. No, didn't work. Because the housekeeping took it out and went, no, silly American, you cannot <laughs> do that i'm like yeah so, so I, but i agree extra i extra bring it okay so that has okay, nothing so to do with you this do topic what? so needle up down is like probably yes. my number one i really like that feature needle up down 
to where you can put the needle in the down position. So when you stop sewing, because you have to walk away or you get interrupted by the dog or... The cat jumps on the table suddenly. Exactly. Something screwy happens. Your needle stops in the down position wherever you're sewing and you don't skip stitches. You don't lose your place. And that's critical to me. Yes, I agree. That should have been on my list. Oh, okay. See, I had a good one. She hates it when I'm right. Go. <laughs> I like having a separate motor for the bobbin winder. Oh. You know, not all because mine I'm good. do, so I don't know that I've thought about. Well, because I have. You mean a separate. Gen- I mean, it's all on the same thing, but it's a separate. So, in theory, I could press the pedal on my Janome and sew things while the bobbin's winding because it's two different motors. As opposed to my featherweight, the built in bobbin winder is mechanical and based on like friction with the the, the rubber i can't do drive. that because of how the thread goes through the machine to sew oh i have like double spool holders on mine no but because of how it hooks on the oh, back yeah. of the machine to the bobbin now it hooks on the that back being said i haven't actually ever done that because it's you just like too that. much concentration i just like to know that i could or that <laughs> this is a feature you will never use or that heaven forbid yeah you should have it on your machine my machine motor clunks out. I could still wind the heck out of some bobbins. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> she will. This is Pam never running out of bobbins. Yeah. We are good to go. Bobbin chicken is a and thing. And you probably have one of those sidewinders. <laughs> yeah, it, it, Bobbin chicken is a thing. I've played it. We, oh, we, we have both won it played. several times. Yes. And then we started hashtagging it. Now other people play it, and it's, it's all over yes. the Instagrams. It's cool. You should play Bob and Chicken. So Bob and Chicken is when you're sewing and you think, I think my bobbin's getting low, but I'm just going to finish this seam. And you get and you see like a thread tail. Like that. It's like a foot or less. Yes. You won you Bob won. and Chicken. Exactly. Thread Chicken also a thing where you've got just on your spool. My spool is kind of hidden behind my machine, so I never know. So that makes it even better. Oh, air of mystery. Yes. And then you're like sewing, you're like, <gasps> and I still have thread and it's just enough. I won Bob and Chicken with that much thread. Oh! The day. It was amazing. That's I mean, awesome. <laughs> that's like a skill right there. Throw myself a parade. I would. Other people were in the house, though, so it... It didn't work. The cats wouldn't, like, They were, they were unimpressed. Those, that's... I'm sorry. Your cats should be way more impressed than that. They should that. be. So, anyway, so, separate bobbin. All right, my second one is knee lift. And I know that not every machine has a knee lift, but I like to be able to needle down. The knee lift engages the presser foot to be raised slightly mm. so that I can move or adjust however I want to move or adjust, which is probably more <laughs> for applique than for, for, applique piecing. Than yeah. for piecing. But I, I will not buy a machine unless it has a knee lift. I do value my knee lift, but I don't really use it in well, piecing because you, you don't have to turn a lot of corners. Your... Yeah, that's true. Well, it depends on if you're doing Y seams or not. If you're doing Y seams, it's helpful. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I could see that. Huh. Hmm. Y seams. Yeah, miters. You're sewing down, hit that, and then miter it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah, there you go. There Valid. you go. Valid. Okay. Um, so mine is a thing that you could easily remedy for, like, less than $10 if you didn't have one. Okay. Thread cutter. Like automatic thread cutter where you press the... Yes, and. <laughs> where you push the button and it does it itself, but also having the tiny blade. And actually, I think I have two on mine. One up to close to where I wind the bobbin and one down uh, by the presser foot. The little blade thing that you kind of loop yeah, the threads loop through. Yeah, loop through and it, and it clicks, yes. Yeah. And then one up the bobbin. There was one that I had on a machine that I no longer have, but it was a good machine, um, where you... Press the foot pedal to sew forward. Oh, yeah. And, and then press you it press it level. down, and it cuts <laughs> the thread. It was awesome. Yeah, until unless it. you got your foot messed up because you sewed on a different machine for a little bit, and you pressed it accidentally and just kept cutting your thread instead of sewing things. Because <laughs> I borrowed that machine one time when we were just sewing. I'm like, what's happening? I like didn't know horrible. how to cut the thread. It was awesome. I love it. But when I switched machines, it's true, because when I switched machines, I would do the press, depress, and it was Nothing. one of those, no, it engages the other machine I was using to raise the needle. I was like, oh, I don't want to raise the needle. I just want to cut the thread. So automatic thread cutter. So 
But if you don't have the one on the side, which most machines do, don't they? I mean, they do. unless it's antique or old, they don't. But the thread cutters guys that did the ring oh, also yeah. make it now in a flat thing with like that a you can stick it on there. Stick it on there. Which those blades do get dull because I found with mine, like it's gotten dull and there's no good way to sharpen that. Probably not. Yeah. Kind of like you seam rippers else, also get dull. That's what I was just going to say. I was like, seam rippers also get dull and people are using seam rippers from their great grandmothers. Like, just go buy a seam ripper. I got one with a burr on it. You can get fancy ones. Mm -hmm. We have a friend who makes some beautiful fancy ones. But you can also get the $3 variety at the big box store. And I have multiple seam rippers because you never know where you're going to need one. Just saying. Okay, what's your last one? My last one is needle position. I want to be able to change the needle position. Why? Um, part of it's applique, but I just took a class from Susan Cleland and she talked about, um, moving the needle position. And I started doing this a little bit, but she talked about moving the needle position over to where you're engaging the side of your feed dogs instead of it in the middle between your, your two, um, instead of sewing with the needle position in the middle, in the middle, between the two feed dogs, if you move the needle position over to where the top of the foot and the bottom and that is over the feed dogs is grabbing consistently, she has a more precise quarter inch seam, but you can't do that without moving the needle position over. Right, because otherwise your fabric, and you will find this if you just like, well, hey, I've got my fabric lined up perfectly. I'm going to reach for my drink instead and just keep it running. You're it starts to skew. Yes. Because one side of your feed dogs are more engaged than the other. Typically, right. the left side gets more engaged than the right side, so it starts feeding. So healthy. she actually sews with her needle position moved over to where the feed dogs are engaged on the other side. Yeah, they're making contact. So I've started doing that, and I, and I feel like it's more successful, which is a big change. Because I'm not using my quarter inch foot anymore, mm -hmm. which I'm so used to looking at. But I'm trying it, and I'm seeing how I like it. But that being said, I know we said this is piecing, but moving the needle position over for applique is critical. Um, so, and I know that was against the rules, but I those are up down needle, knee lift, needle position. Those are those are key for me, and all the stitches. All the stitch. I still want all the stitches. You don't need all the stitches. I like all the stitches. All, like the most variety of stitches I can have is like you get one. No, I want all the stitches because I'm I've got a new pattern in my head that will come out with all the stitches. <laughs> and just my so you know, face. production support just went. Oh no, what she gonna hand me? <laughs> <laughs> they did just see the Roman years quilt I did, and I, they're a little concerned that I've got some crazy ideas. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so now we are going to take a closer look at the antique quilt. Well, it's really vintage. It's not antique, technically. Um, and it's of my great-grandmother's <laughs> great grandma's flower garden. And we'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, we're back, and we are going to talk about quilting antique tops. There you go. Have you ever just bought an antique quilt or vintage quilt top? No. No, me either. <laughs> That's why this is a viewer but, submission. But that but means... that thing we haven't done yet. <laughs> yes and no. But I do get asked this a lot. Like, people ask me, I think because I'm a quilt appraiser and they bring me tops, and I usually, nine times out of ten, will not appraise a quilt top because I won't appraise things that I cannot value over $250. Um, and most, if not all, certified quilt appraisals will not 
uh, appraise something they can't value over a specific dollar amount. And I think most of us are between the 200 to 500 range kind of thing. So I personally, 250 is my cutoff. And a lot of times quilt tops don't hit that, mm -hmm. especially vintage or antique tops. So I won't appraise them for people, but people ask me all the time, what do I do with them? And you know what my answer is? It's your quilt. <laughs> what do you want to do with it? Because there's a lot, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you want to do with it? And I think people can. <laughs> Same thing we do every night. <laughs> try and take, take over, over the, the world. world. There you go. With quilts. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I get asked a lot how, what they should do with it. And my biggest concern when you have an antique or a vintage quilt top is what's the condition it's in. Mm -hmm. So are the seams splitting? Is the fabric in good condition? Is right. it decaying, fugitive? Yes. Like all those things, right? Yeah. Because, and then do you want to, is this something in your family and you want to, to finish it, to have it for gen like a generational quilt, like grandma started it, mom helped, and now I'm going to finish it. Or, mm -hmm. And I see some of those. Now, once they get it all done, bring it back to me and I'll appraise it. But until it's completed, yeah. usually I can't value it at the right price. Um, that being said, condition of the fabric's definitely like the number one thing. And then I ask them, are you going to hand quilt it or machine quilt it? Because if you're going to machine quilt it, it needs to be in a little bit better condition than hand quilting. Yeah. Especially the seams. Because, and if you're putting it on a long arm, definitely. Because you're stretching it and you're putting, you know. Tension. Tension on those seams that you don't want to pop kind of thing. Yeah. Or even if you're quilting on a domestic, like that's a lot of scrunching and tugging. And oh, True. It's probably not even more work than Do on the think? top. I, you hand quilt. I really don't hand quilt. I only hand quilt one thing. <laughs> I mean, I've hand quilted in a class <laughs> and decided probably not my cup of tea. But I, I think that's one of those classes I took too early in my career, though. Like, I took it before I really should have taken it. Mm -hmm. I think I would appreciate it more now and I'd probably be better at it now. I should probably retake it, but the lady who teaches it, I don't think teaches anymore in the area that I would like to retake from. Hey, if only there were quilt shows coming around that we're going to. But how many teach hand quilting? Like you don't see it taught a lot. I took it from Sharon Chamber. Did you really? I did. <laughs> Hoopless did hand quilting at the original Sewing and Quilt Expo two, three years ago. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh. I should take it from Sharon. Yes, you should. But she's not local. But she, I bet, even has a video on it. I bet she does. So, well, how would you do? Like, what do you consider? If someone brought a, or if you bought a antique quilt top or vintage quilt top, do you know the difference between antique and vintage? Oh, 20 years. <laughs> I don't know. Something to do with the, like, 50 years is vintage and over 50 years is antique. I don't know. 100, is. actually, okay. is antique. Over 100 years is antique. Under that is vintage. Yeah. Pretty much. But, yeah, I think it's got to be 30 years older than the current day for it to be kind of considered vintage. Otherwise, it's just old and funky. <laughs> it's old and, yeah. <laughs> so, so, guess what? Double knits are almost, that's what I got. <laughs> Double knit quilts. Our vintage. So if I got an antique top, I would probably go about making it and modernizing it. So you're going to long arm it? I mean, no, or quilt, I machine quilt it? <laughs> yes, I would machine quilt it. In part because my hand quilting is not great. I don't have, with the regular thread, what I've been doing has been big stitch hand quilting. Right, which is fine. There's good. Well, it's fine for the project I'm doing it on. But I don't, I mean, honestly, it depends on the top. If it's a double wedding ring top versus a grandmother's flower garden. Versus, You're not going to, yeah. Yeah. Big stitch a double wedding ring. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know that I'd like that. My quilting. You can I do, do what, I what you want, though. That's what I asked earlier. What do you want to do with it? <laughs> so I probably would. And also, there's been a lot of really cool displays, and there was one at, the show I went to that had uh, vintage 
tops that had been given to long arm quilters. And was it Mary Kerr's? Yes. Yes, that has. I've seen that. I've seen she, it a couple times. Yeah, a couple times, and it's fascinating mm-hmm. because I really think what long arm creativity, long armors, creatively look at some of these older quilt tops and add to them. It's just fantastic. Mm-hmm. And and if you're appraising that, you're looking at it as a new creation or mm-hmm. new quilt. Because even though you're using an antique top, it's finished in this day and age. So it's finished now. So it would be new in that aspect kind of thing. Yeah. I don't have, I, I may have a couple. Like, I, I think I have another just top that's uh, Grandmother's Flower Garden. But really, most of the quilts that I own that are vintage are uh, finished. So... What I would find probably the hardest thing is figuring out what fabric to put on the binding. Because the back, you're like, oh, okay, well, you could go with muslin and, and be of the time. Of or, the time, yeah. But then to think about the binding choice, like, ooh. <laughs> oh, have you seen the new muslims that are out? They're like all these different colors. Mm-mm. Oh, they're very cool. Like, I almost bought some the other day. Very cool, these muslins. Muslins. Uh, and I can't remember <laughs> muslins. Yes. And I can't remember. <laughs> Slight difference. <laughs> True. <laughs> You're right. Sorry. Um, Muslim. I was going to let that go, and I'm like, she said it again. Can't let it go. <laughs> I know. It's Somebody okay. else, like, they posted something the other day, like, you mispronounced something. Oh, yeah. Well, welcome I'm to like, the club. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you know me? I'm really bad. So, oh, it, when you're when you're quilting or looking at quilting an antique or vintage quilt, do you take into consideration needle? No. Thread? Yes. Only because I would sit there and think polyester, cotton, rayon, silk, whatever. Hmm. hmm. See, because of my long arm likes a certain thread, that's the thread we would use. Because <laughs> she's happier. Therefore, I'm happier. Therefore, the quilt gets done. When she's not happy, thread doesn't go through, and the quilt does not get done. So it's all poly. <laughs> she's very picky. She likes the poly. I can go either way with mine. Either a, there's a cotton thread that works okay, and then there's a polyester thread that works okay. But there, I've even used, you know, rayon, and, and that's gone well because it's nice and slippery. But it's got a sheen to it that maybe doesn't quite work with the, yeah, the vintage textiles. Yeah, vintage. Yes. And I would think you would want the matte finish on the thread. <laughs> True. I yeah, well, depending on the top again yeah, and true. what you're trying to do to it and that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, this one is quilted what they call to the piece, um, and it's hand quilted. Of course, it was done during the time frame and not. It's not a top that was given to me. But if I do find the one that's another one, and I was going to quilt it, I think that would be my. I'm going to learn hand, and I will hand quilt it to the piece. Because to the piece is, you don't have to make design decisions. That's on true. To the piece. That's the benefit. <laughs> and what we mean, I don't know if we've said this before, we may have, but what to the piece is, like, every one of these hexi has a quarter inch from the seam inside little stitches all the way around. So every little hexi has little stitches inside yeah. of it, quarter inch from the seam. It's not in the ditch. That's very right. Different. Yes. And I would do to the piece because I think that that would be also you don't have to think about it. Hey, did they use a lot of different colored thread back in the era? Because most of the antique tops I've seen, it's been white or off white thread. Yep. No. Like that's, that's what you got. That's <laughs> what you had. Yeah. I didn't see a lot of I've never seen a lot of different colors of thread, but I've also never been asked that question. So I would have to research and ask a few people if they've seen it. But I have to admit, I've never seen um, it's always been white or off-white. Or, I mean, it may look brown now, but yeah. it aged with the quilt kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, uh, what else do you have? I made a note that I don't know how to in- <laughs> decipher. Work of machine. Work of machine. I don't know what that means. Work of machine. Work of machine. Okay, so maybe this, I, I it's think like it, a puzzle we can I figure out. I think it, it relates to what we talked about earlier with the 
amount of handling required to get it through a machine. Oh, right. With the tension and stuff like that. I mean, on a long arm, I'm very, I'm looking at those seams and making sure that they're stable. Because if I stretch that out, I don't want to pop those seams. You don't want to do that on today's quilt. You know, if people don't quite piece well, you can pop machine, you know, pop stitches. Or you don't do the victory lap, which is just the stay stitching, like the eighth inch from the very edge of your quilt top. Right, exactly. Exactly. So, anything else? No. So, are you a topper or a quilt backer? <laughs> are those even a thing? Let us know. We'll leave a comment on our blog or on the YouTube episode. And that's all we have for this episode. Today's show is made possible by QT Fabrics. Learn more about their fun fabrics at qtfabrics.com. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches, Big Think Productions, for helping produce the stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. The next virtual stitching is Friday, April 13th. That's not a spooky day, to be honest. 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcast live on our YouTube channel. And my podcast, Tip to Be a Square, is out mostly on Friday, sometimes a Saturday on iTunes or Google Play. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com. Tune in next time for more quilting chat with friends.